WDON1204.com. Community focused, globally connected. Find us online at Coleman Global. WDON is proud to present our latest podcast, The Colors of Sound. Our mission is to create a safe space for community members from around the world to share their personal stories. Listen on all streaming platforms or on our podcast station, WDON1204.com. The Colors of Sound podcast. Discover how much we have in common. Tune in as the LGBTQ plus elders of SAGE share their passionate stories of struggle, pain, triumph, and love. Available on all streaming platforms. The Colors of Sound podcast. Discover how much we have in common. Over the summer of 2023, Coleman Global partnered with Sage USA to bring the Colors of Sound podcasting workshop to LGBT plus older adults in New York City. The intergenerational sessions focused on finding your point of view and the art of storytelling. Each week, participants crafted their own topics for discussion, developed their own questions to help move the conversations along, spoke about podcasting equipment, and had brief discussions on how to market podcasts online. Throughout the workshop series, the participants shared their personal stories of both struggle and of triumph. We laughed about the things that are common in society and debated those things that divide our global community. Welcome to the Colors of Sound podcast. You are now a part of the conversation. Yeah, um, as I've grown into my little young adulthood, I've been, I've been taking these holidays and trying to make them special for my family and my siblings because after my dad passed, that just like went with him. And there was just a lot of grieving. And when the holidays would come around, they would just grieve. Well, my mom mainly, and yeah, she's the top of the household, so I, she's just showering some of her feelings. Like, you know, they say when it's raining, that's like they're crying up there or something like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that comes down, and that has an effect on everyone in yeah. the household. So I've been, you know, doing Christmas myself. I've been decorating with the kids, having them do little Christmas activities. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, nice. nice. that's nice. I'll get them gifts. Do you all make. Um, like New Year's resolutions, like do you have things that you, you know, as you get closer to the end of the year that you, like that you normally do, like to wrap up the year, to start a new year? Do you have any, like, I don't want to say rituals, but I mean like traditions or anything that you do personally? Yeah. 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 The only thing that I do is to make sure that I have money in my pocket. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To bring in the new year, and they say keep pots on the stove, keep food on the stove. To yeah, like the black eyed peas is yes. for this, and yeah. the collard greens are for money. And wait, 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 what's this? Black eyed peas for wisdom. The who? Black eyed peas. Yeah. 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 And then they have this thing. They say let a man walk through your door first. Yeah. yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A man walk. Listen. Why would I want to walk through the house? That's what they say. It's all saying that yeah. they say for New Year's let a man walk. In the house first. Oh. Sage, sage, you still, you get out still got dirty clothes on. on. The clothes you got on. Is that's dirty. you know what. That's another thing. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not doing no laundry because whatever is there is going to be there in the next year. Why well, I got to clean? You know, the, but I do clean the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and stuff like that. But as far as you know, you're not supposed to have dirty. You're not supposed to have laundry. Yeah. Hanging around for the new year, and I'm like, okay. I used to wash my clothes and make sure I didn't have anything for the new year, but now it's like, you know what the heck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to wash my clothes. I used to make sure I have pots on the stuff. But you know what? The year when the year go by, this it's the same thing. Exactly. You know, I'm gonna have dirty clothes. I'm gonna have pots on the stove. So I just, I mean, I just left that alone. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. 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 Like I usually clean. I usually rearrange everything. That's what I do. Like every time I feel like I'm entering a different chapter in my life, mm-hmm. I just change my room around. But when I'm going into a new year, I write down and I remind myself what I did that year or what I'm proud of as well. That's, that's, yeah, that's awesome. good. That's really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, what, what we used to do, I don't know where, what we used to do is um, like write down, like you said, write down your thoughts and write down what you want, what you want to accomplish for the new year, put it in an envelope mm-hmm. and then New Year's Day, open it, read it. And this is what you want to do for New Year's. Mm-hmm. What's everyone's favorite dessert? Dessert? Mm-hmm. <sighs> I don't eat sweets. Yeah, she doesn't eat sweets. I used to eat them, but I was a fat girl. Mm-hmm. So I had to. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, wow. So what's another favorite uh, sweet that you guys like for the holidays? Champagne. 
<laughs> that is not sweet. I like coquito. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Do you make my it? Coquito my neighbor, neighbor up, makes coquito. Oh, my goodness. Okay, what the hell is coquito? It's, it's a Spanish drink, and it's liquor yes. and coconut milk, and, the, and, and mm. oh, my God, it's so mm. 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 If you do it right. Yes. If you do it right. Yes. You make it. No, I want to this year, though. It's you should like do it. Year. So... I mastered making the rice and beans, so I think I can do it. Oh my awesome. God, that's great! That's great. Mm -hmm. All right. I add bits of spinach in there because everyone needs their greens. I that's like good. it as um, That's one cake I can't eat. It's so sweet. The, yeah, the only thing I don't like about tres leche is the is the. Well, yeah, well, if I do it, because then I'm gonna change it up. Yeah, I'm gonna change it up. It's that carnation milk part. I don't I don't like the taste of that. Yeah. Carnation milk. That's what we grew up with. I know. I know, but it's so f forward in the in that tres leche cake. cake. Like it's so like cake. milky. I can't. Mm. That's right. Yeah. What kind of sweets do you eat? In, in even if it's for the holidays, do you do you allow yourself anything in the holiday season? Sweets first. <laughs> sweets. All kinds. You make you make you, ha you make um your sweets. You make your cakes and pies. I make stuff. my plate. Yes. No, not your plate. How do we feel about chicken pot pies? Sorry. Mm. I love, you know, but it depends it's on the me brand. Hungry. Because all, like, I like Bang. banquet. <laughs> chicken pot pies. <laughs> but anything else, it just, just takes, it tastes artificial or something. It just... Don't taste like KFC makes a wonderful pot pie. Who? KFC. Banana food. So would you, have you guys ever put out like a, like a little digital cookbook for the holidays before? No. No, where everybody had like, you know, if you, would you be willing to submit a recipe? I mean, we could throw that together and then just put it, you know, in a space uh, for people to download, you know, and you can share it around with the other participants and. Oh, yeah. I think that would be kind of cool, right? Like if you guys did did like just one recipe. I'll I make the first one to get all the recipes. Then I don't know. That sounds like homework. <laughs> you can't tell. I know. No, yeah. I know. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like. <laughs> and those are, and those are the people that eat a lot. You, right. Those people that look like right. You, you see them on their third plate, and you're like, "How's it possible?" Yes. Yeah, yeah. It is Sage leads in addressing issues related to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer and questioning, and other self-identifying members of the community aging. In partnership with its constituents and allies, Sage works to achieve a high quality of life for LGBTQ plus older people, supports and advocates for their rights, fosters a greater understanding of aging in all communities, and promotes positive images of LGBTQ plus life in later years. So how do you guys feel about community? What does that word mean to you? It means, I feel like most would assume it means comfort, but in community, unfortunately, there is sometimes, it's like a, a map and there's different kind of people and people tend to box, them, box themselves in. So that's how you look at it and Sometimes people don't feel like they're welcome in community, but when you find your place, then you know that's your place. If you walk into a room and you feel uncomfortable and you feel like you shouldn't be there, then on time out of 10, you should get up and go because you probably don't belong there. Hmm. Not because something's wrong with you, but you should go where you're welcomed and loved. Mm -hmm. So, and that, that's community where all the troubles are the same. I mean, there's so many different ways that that can mean, right? It's your family, it's the area you live in, it's uh, your online community if you're a person that's active online. The only main difference is when you work for someone else and then you're in a community that you are pretty much depending on maintaining a lifestyle, your basic lifestyle. So that's a community that maybe you're not going to get all the warm fuzzies and the out of boy, out of girl kind of a motivator. So it's more of an inward thing. And being with 
other folks of that community. So there are communities within communities. So it's like, um, oh, what would you call it, very um, macro and micro. Right, right. That's right. Right now, macro would be the LGBTQ community. Macro would be New York State, the United States, the hemisphere, the planet, the galaxy. It's all according to how far you want to go and then how small you want to go. Mm -hmm. Right now, this is pretty small. Community is nice. togetherness. Mm -hmm. I like to use the word togetherness when I think of community. Mm -hmm. Whatever that might be, you know. Whatever you think that is your community, whether it's a religious community, you know, or a, a social community, but it's just togetherness. That's right. And I feel communities um, trust people that I can trust in my community. Mm -hmm. You know, so like she was saying, you have a small community, and I have a small one, so I feel trust. That's good. Have you ever had to walk away from a, a specific community or, or a space where you had defined that as community? Absolutely. Yes. That happens. Yes. That's life happening. Mm -hmm. You outgrow a community. Mm -hmm. You know, or you find that the usefulness, usefulness of that community no longer applies to you. Right. So you move on. You know, you grow. Some of us get stuck. Yeah. Right there in that same community, and we never move. That's true. Because we, we are afraid, we're comfortable. That's right. And I want you to interject, I'm so glad I heard you all the way through, that was beautifully said. Now it's up to when you come to that epiphany. Aha, this is something I've outgrown, I now need to move on. So from the gathering, it's a three A's. I recently learned the three A's, awareness, acceptance, and action. So we may be aware, it takes a while to accept, and then action. Ooh. Sometimes the plan is big, sometimes it's small, but sometimes it can take minutes, sometimes it can take decades. That's right. As long as it happens, you know, we're, many of us here, this is definitely an intergenerational crowd right now in this podcast, but most of us are learning that time is precious. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I think, you know, I like what you said about the awareness, right? I think awareness of anything, like, automatically creates a wave of change, even if you don't outwardly act upon it, right? And I'll keep it like even just the conversation we were just having about the different types of milk, right? Coconut milk, almond milk, this and that. It was just my awareness of reading ingredients that I was like, wait a minute, how can I achieve this with less stuff in it, right? It's, it's the awareness, but the action, it's... <laughs> is the harder part because sometimes when you have an answer and you know what the action is you have to take, um, either you really jump on it and you do it or you get intimidated by it and it's like, mm, that's gonna unravel a lot of things. Like, how do I take, act? like, how do I do it? And in my estimation, it's, it's about, now it's about faith and prayer and that spirituality, which isn't religion, that can certainly be religion, but now we're talking about faith and prayer mm -hmm. and knowing that we have been on this planet a long time. And uh, for me, this almost seven decades on the planet has taught me sometimes you can't see what you want, but with faith, it will be there. And when it comes, it's right on time. It may not be on your time. It will rarely, let's go ahead and say, ever be on your time. <laughs> because faith, you're tapping into something spiritual, and in the spiritual realm, time is different. right? You have, and that's the difference between planning for something and preparing for it. You can't always plan for something to happen when you want it to happen, but you can be prepared for it so that when it's the right time for it to happen, you step right into it. I, I remember I had I, I had a, a community of us. We used to get together on the weekends, 
and we would just just party and drink. And we did this every single weekend. And, I mean, everybody went to work, came home from work, got the kids together, did whatever, and we would do this every Friday. It got to a point where I, just, I, I, I was in my bed when I said, I can't do this no more. I'm tired. <laughs> I said, I'm tired. So when I stopped, when I stopped going and stopped letting them come to my house, they got upset with me. They really got upset with me. They didn't really want to speak to me. Because you are good all of that. You know, when someone gets upset with you, it forces them to look at themselves mm -hmm. because they're going to say, oh, you think you're better than I am. But, you know, I'm, not no, I'm no longer good enough for you. Which try, you know, to make you feel guilt. Mm -hmm. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> because it's uncomfortable for me. Because I thought I knew you. We did this together. I thought everything was cool. Now that you're stepping away, What's wrong with me? I can't say that. But now I'm, what's wrong with me? I gotta get you back into the fold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're not thinking mm -hmm. that it's, it's, you know, maybe she doesn't wanna, she doesn't wanna participate anymore. They're thinking, like you said, oh, mm -hmm. you're too good now. Mm -hmm. But come yeah. on, y'all been doing the same thing we, every, every weekend. weekend. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, come on. I mean, it was one of them got to a point where she smacked me. <gasps> He jumped up and smacked me. We started fighting. It was, it was crazy. We was at, I was at her house. Telemundo. He said, you think you're better than us? Whatever. What? I said, I'm not, yeah, I said, I'm not better than you. I'm better than the problem. She said, you better than what? I said, I'm better than, than the problem. And she tore off and smacked me. It was a fight in there, girl. Oh, my God. You were all in her head. Mm -hmm. And you didn't stop. And you didn't, because it didn't, that wasn't the first clash. The first clash might have been, calling or texting and then it just got bigger, it escalated to a face to face and she attacked you. You were supposed to have agreed with her when she first told you to. Mm -hmm. And she was used to you doing that, I'm mm -hmm. sure. And then, oh my gosh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good for you, that took a lot of courage. Did you go back in the fold with that group of people? No, I never went back. No, well, you don't know why you would go back. <laughs> Some people would. Absolutely, right. if, if that's my normal. Right. So when you that's are true. in a traumatic kind of environment, you start to normalize things. Because everyone's telling you, don't talk about it. Whatever's said here, yeah. uh, whatever you see here stays here. Mm -hmm. And then becomes a generational thing with not getting the help that you need. That was a that was a domestic violence situation. So domestic violence isn't just a couple, whether they be heterosexual or homosexual, but it's community like we're talking about. And that community was very abusive. And I'm so glad you were able to walk away. Yeah, I had to raise my kids. And I sure can raise my kids with a pile every weekend. Mm -hmm. That's, that's uh, the, the first part of courage was that you made the change. The second part of courage is that you stayed the course. Once you made the change, you stayed with the decision, right? And I think that's what you, we were yeah, saying yeah. from before. That's hard for a lot of people because you fall back into patterns of, of behavior, right? And it's And it's... You grow accustomed, like you're saying, normalize. You grow accustomed to how someone speaks to you or how someone treats you. or You know what I'm saying? And it becomes the quote-unquote norm. Share your story on the Colors of Sound podcast. Our mission is to create a safe space for community members from around the world to share their unique stories. Do you have an interesting story to share? Or perhaps a journey of triumph from a challenge that you faced? Do you want the world to know about your talent? Visit our website and complete our guest intake form at WDON1204.com. The Colors of Sound podcast. Discover how much we have in common.